Frogs are kind of boring, right? Well, no, there's actually five species that you've never even heard of that make amazing pets and they're super cool. So today, let's talk about them. My name's Adam, this is Diamond, you're watching Wiccans Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Okay, I already feel the keyboard rattling from here. Uh, I know that you don't think frogs are boring, because if you did, you wouldn't click on the video. I don't think they're boring either, but I make videos about frogs and nobody cares. And uh, there is a frog right there. So there are five that I think are really cool and for sure you've never heard of. So let's just get into them and I'll tell you what makes them so interesting. Number five, Harlequin toads. Now Harlequin toads, like they say in the name, is a toad, but guess what? All toads are frogs, but not all frogs are toads. And harlequin toads are more similar to dart frogs, in my opinion, than anything else. Not physically or scientifically, but a lot of people, including Troy Goldberg, will keep them together, or used to anyway. Now, what's really cool about these guys is they're from South America, and they're going to be walking rather than hopping. What's really cool about the way they move is they look, I don't even really know how to describe it. They're literally walking where most frogs will hop. Also, the color is absolutely amazing. I know this video is about frogs, but can you guys be quiet for like 10 minutes? The colors are amazing. Now the Harlequin frogs that you see in captivity, which are very rare by the way, are usually purple. Now they come in yellows and oranges and bronzes too, just depending on locale. But in general, Harlequin toads are really difficult to breed in captivity. And that's why you don't see a lot of them. In fact, in Canada, we've got two people that imported them. That's it. One of them is out west and one of them is my buddy here. So I mean, they're not really available and only one of them has bred them successfully in captivity here in Canada. Now in the US, they're a little bit more common, but either way, I think you're gonna see them rise in popularity as they become more common, the price will come down and we'll understand a little bit about them. From what I understand from the people who do breed them, they like to breed near streams. So that's why it's so difficult in captivity because they need a running water. Once we figure that out, who knows? Maybe we'll be able to breed them just as easily as dart frogs. They're breeding like crazy, by the way, which is why they are so freaking loud. I love dart frogs. Now, there is a vested interest, too, because they are critically endangered. So if we could figure out the way to breed them, zoos and breeding programs that might one day be able to reintroduce them into the wild if necessary, we could do that. Until we figure out how to readily breed them, well, tough luck. Can't really do that now, can we? Number four, Cruziohyla. So these are fringed leaf frogs. There's two species, I, there might be more, but there's two main species, Sylvia or Sylviae and Cruziohyla craspidopus. Now the craspidopus, in my opinion, is the coolest leaf frog, is what they are, in the world that you can keep in captivity generally. And I found a Sylviae, or not me, but the group of people I was with in Costa Rica last year, I remember it, these guides, they were like chirping into the sky for two hours as we walked through the woods at like two in the morning. And then all of a sudden they're like up there, look, and we found it like from miles away in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of a rainforest. And we found this thing just by calling back and forth with it. And it was super cool. It's beautiful, but not as beautiful as the Craspidopus, which in my opinion is the most beautiful leaf frog or tree frog or whatever you want to call it in the world. Now my friend Mike Titula, he makes videos about them. That's the footage that you see here. Thanks Mike for showing me this. And it was really cool because Mike is like a super nerd about these guys. And we found the Cruzio highlight together in the forest. So it was like a kid on Christmas. It was really cool. Now why I think that they're so unique is just because they look so unique. Most frogs do not look like this. And although they're not gonna be diurnal like the Harlequin toads are by the way, so they can be out during the day, these will be nocturnal. But the way that they move is so unique and their color is so unique and they're big frogs too they're not little these are big frogs and they're not the easiest to keep they're pretty challenging but if you once you figure it out they're very rewarding and you can keep them in groups if you know what you're doing cruzio hyla are going to become more popular next year for sure you probably never heard of them and i think that they're really not boring for frogs number three and maybe my favorite frog from when i was a child malayan horn frogs these have captured my attention forever. I saw them in a documentary maybe 20 years ago, maybe even longer, and I used to have a pair too. Now we'll get into that in a sec. Now why they're interesting, it's pretty obvious. Look at the way that they look. They have these, not appendages, but these, 
I don't even know what you'd call them, projections over their eyes, and their nose is really pointed too. Now, this is for camouflage mostly. If it's for breeding also, we're not totally sure, we're still studying that, but Malayan horned frogs are from, well, Malaysia and surrounding area. And there's very similar frogs from around the world in that part of Southeast Asia too. So this isn't the only frog that looks similar to this, but in my opinion, it's the coolest one. And the reason that I like this one more than all the others is their call. I had a pair, okay? These are big frogs, they're very cool. I had two males and when they call, I didn't know what they sounded like before I got them. So I'm listening to these chirps and beep. And then I'm looking around because I think that my smoke detector is running out of battery. Because that's what it sounds like when your smoke detector runs out of battery. But my smoke detectors are hardwired. So I looked around the house for my dying battery smoke detectors when I don't have a battery. Anyway, I'm not the smartest person in the world, but that's what they sound like. So in my opinion, it's really interesting because you'll hear them at night from far, far away, but it's not enough to really wake you up because it's one blast of a beat. Now, I'm not gonna lie. The fact that they call interestingly and the way they look is interesting, so to take them up for pictures, but if you want something that's gonna move around in the enclosure or sit in plain sight, these are not for you. These animals are gonna kind of bury down into the leaf litter that you give them. I imagine you'll give them some form of leaf litter because they do really well in bioactive enclosures. They need it really humid, but they don't move. When you feed them though, it's interesting. It's very similar to a Pac-Man frog in the way that they kind of like, they ambush and go crazy, but they're not gonna be moving around like a dart frog, which maybe we'll get to in a second. And they're kind of difficult to keep. I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but I would say I'm seasoned in keeping frogs. And normally I do really, really well. Both of the animals that I bought, they were males, they were imported. They both died within about six weeks. One died almost immediately, and then the next one followed a few weeks later. It was really sad. They're not the cheapest frogs, but more than that, I just really liked having them and looking at them. It was real. I don't know why. I, I can't really put my finger on it, but I'm not going to get another pair until I figure it out. And uh, yeah, I mean, not the easiest thing in the world, but definitely one of the coolest. And maybe you didn't even know they existed. Number two, waxy monkey tree frogs, which aren't even tree frogs. They're technically leaf frogs. So are red eye tree frogs, by the way. They're not even tree frogs. They're leaf frogs. Te anyway. We'll just, that's another discussion for another day. Now, waxy monkey tree frogs are from South America. They're really cool, they're really big, and they're super unique looking. These guys look like they're deformed. Imagine a white tree frog's evil brother. That's what they look like. It looks like if you had like a devil and angel, right? Like the white tree frog is like the angel, you know, like don't buy any more reptiles, you don't need them. And then at the expo, right? Like then the waxy monkey's like, you should buy all the, animals you know you want to so like that's i imagine what they are but either way from different parts of the world but if you like white tree frogs i think what's even cooler is waxy monkey tree frogs now why are they called waxy monkey tree frogs well they are very unique because although they are nocturnal they will be out during the day on perches so they'll be sleeping and they won't really be moving but oftentimes they'll be in direct sunlight now how is that possible because we all know or if you don't know now you do Frogs can lose moisture through their skin. They can be dehydrated through their skin. You're not gonna find frogs sitting out in the sun for any length of time, even dart frogs. They're going to seek shelter, they're gonna seek shade because that sun can not only burn their skin, but it will help evaporate the liquid inside or the moisture inside and outside their body. And frogs need to stay moist, right? They can take in things through their skin. They're an amphibian, not a reptile. Waxy monkey tree frogs, in the day, in the morning, they will take their wicked looking back legs and they'll take the secretions over their head, which is what those crazy crest bumpy things are. They produce like a wax like substance and then they'll kind of slather themselves like it's sunblock. Now these are a frog after my own heart because if you can't tell by my complexion, if I go in the sun for 13 and a half seconds, I become a lobster. So it's really cool that these frogs have the same issues that I do and have to prepare to go into the sun like a regular creature. So I'm right here with you. I feel you, waxy monkey tree frogs. Huge frogs that look super unique. They eat insects, but they can eat bigger insects like roaches and things like that. Overall, my favorite animal to look at in the tree frog, leaf frog, family, an animal I would love to keep one day in a group, in a big enclosure, but I don't know. For now, let's just move on to number one. 
my favorite frog in my collection and one that is absolutely not boring. Number one. No, it's not dart frogs. It's one specific type of dart frog, Terribilis. Philobates terribilis. Now, these are called terrible dart frogs because they are the most poisonous vertebrate on the planet. The most poisonous animal that has a backbone on the planet, but not in captivity. Now, these are one of the largest, or maybe the largest dart frog, I think that they are. They come in a few different colorations. Yellow, orange, orange with black feet, the Blackfoots, and these mints that I have. And these aren't even full grown. These are big dart frogs, way bigger than Leucamelas or Tinctorius or anything like that. And that's why I like them. They're big, they're easy to see, and they're gonna be hopping around a lot because they're very bold. In the dart frog community, if you don't know, calling something bold means that they're not shy. They're gonna be out, moving around, and easy for you to see. That's why I love them. Also, they have this really unique call. I'll use a little bit of uh, Troy Goldberg footage here. And that's what they sound like. Now, similar to the Santa Isabels, it's hilarious. So Santa Isabels are much smaller, right? They're not in the same family as Philobates. And I got them for that sound. I didn't really think about the fact that they would ruin the video or maybe make it better. Let me know in the comment. Like, do you like the tr Anyway. Let's just move on. I am making a custom enclosure. It's about 100 gallons, three by three by 18 inches, right? Three foot, three foot 18. Anyway, it's gonna have crazy plants in it. And what I wanna keep is a whole bunch of Philobates terribilis. Now, I wanna keep the orange ones in here because in this enclosure here, you see the mints. And although I love them, I think it'd be even cooler with all that green and moss and all this interesting kind of green background. I think it'd be cool to have an animal that has a lot more contrast, like an orange color, hopping around a green background. So these are my favorite species. And by the way, they're not dangerous in captivity because the crickets, which is they're bulldogs, by the way, they can actually eat crickets. Most dart frogs, there's a care guide right here. Most dart frogs will only eat small insects like fruit flies, for example, that's what we mostly feed them. But Terribilis will actually easily eat full size or half inch crickets is what I recommend, although they can take full size large crickets down and they're gonna eat things like flies too. So more variation, but they're big, they're robust, they're not shy, they're my favorite. And oh, getting back to the point, in the wild they eat things that they alkalize. I'm not good with, they make poison in their bodies, but in captivity they don't do that. Like, did I just spill all the beans about how not smart I am? Okay, that's enough. And that's it. Tell me, what do you think the least boring frog is? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love for you to tell me, and maybe we can do a part two. If you'd like, hit like and subscribe. That's how I know you like these videos and want to see more of them. And a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys get videos early, discounts on merch. These guys are breeding and you're going to see their babies way before everybody else. And you'll see a sneak peek at the Madagascar trip that I'm on right now, probably when this video drops. So for as little as a dollar a month, you can be part of that too. And that's it. Because I do videos on Mondays and Thursdays. That means I'll see you in the next one.